Hello, my name is Mike Ward and I'm the head of content at Informa Pharma Insights and I'm here at the Bio Europe Spring Meeting in Austria. I'm joined by uh, Walter Sungen, who's the CEO of uh, Pion AG and uh, your company is an interesting company because it's one of the few European biotechs that actually have managed to go from pre-clinic all the way to well, the cusp of uh, commercialization w w with the product. What, what's that journey been like? Oh, it's been a long ride since 2008 when we acquired Sandus Pharmaceuticals. Yeah. This was still pre-IND and now with the first filings in towards the end of last year, so 10 years. Um, we could have done quicker, but the financial crisis interfered with financing, so we had to slow down on the programs. But the results, nevertheless, are so good that I'm, I'm happy where we are right now. So, and, and the product, uh, I'm going to try and pronounce this, Remy Zalam. Remy 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 Um yeah, You guys make it so easy for us. Um, <clears throat> it's in the uh, anesthesia sedation space. Yes. What, what, what is the sort of the challenge in that, in that marketplace at the moment anyway? Well, the, the, the challenge is, is several fold. Um, the, the point is that, the, that there has not been a lot of innovation. So the, the current main drugs that are used in sedation is midazolam right. and propofol. Both have been launched in the 1980s. Uh, there has not been anything since then. Um, the, the challenges for midazolam are is efficiency because patients have a long ha hangover, so it's diffi difficult to time when they wake up. Yeah. For propofol, the challenge is that it has significant hypotension, which is not wanted during surgery and during ma major yeah. anesthesia, anesthesia, and it should only be used by anesthesiologists. So in the US, it's also a big cost discussion ongoing. Right. The challenge that we have that this is a completely genericized market. So the question is, how can we justify a price that gives, um, you know, back our return? So yeah. that's where many people have a question mark. Yeah. So and, and what's the answer to that that question? Well, the answer to that question is that, for example, uh, we have we have modeled, for example, for a typical Canadian setup where they do 50 colonoscopies in a defined setup with three physicians, nurses, three rooms, wake-up rooms, yeah. they can do only 50. With our drug, they could do 82. And that means they, gain, they save $100 per patient, just looking at the hospital costs. Yeah. And this is the type of value proposition that in the sedation space, it, it is efficiency and not necessarily requiring an anesthesiologist, so that also adds to the cost element. And in general anesthesia, it is to avoid significant hypotension because that leads to mortality and also sometimes delirium, which means patient will wake up disoriented. Right. But in, but in, in, in economic terms, it's essentially $3,000 a day saving to a um, you know, one, one of these operating Yes. Groups. Well, well on, if you're in, on the ICU, if you have to stay longer on the ICU, that, that's exactly yeah. a, a day saving that you can claim. We have not done those data, but this yeah. is what people expect, that we can shorten times on the ICU. Okay. So, 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 so the product, it's, um, it's at various sort of stages of, as I say, it's at the cusp of, of, of commercialization. Yes. So you've, you've filed, or, or partners yeah. have filed in, in, in certain markets. So you could just give us a rundown of what the timeline is, the expectation is of that? Yes, in, in, uh, the first filing happened in China in November last year, yeah. the second in Japan uh, by Mundi Pharma, and uh, we are expecting filing of our US partner any any day now, so short, this will be shortly. Yeah. Uh, so these are the three leads, and when these filings have been accepted, the dossiers can be used by other partners. We have uh, partners in South Korea, we have partners in Turkey, MENA region, Canada, and we have the ambition to market this helps in parts of Europe. And recently the EMA gave us a signal that they would accept, expect, accept the dossier from the US for filing in, in Europe. Oh, okay. But you're, 
So that's for one indication, because you've got a phase three running at the moment. In, yes, in that's Europe. general anesthesia. So right. the, the product has three different indications. Yeah. The one is procedural sedation, like colonoscopies. Yeah. The other one is general anesthesia. And the third one is ICU yeah. sedation. And then in addition comes a potential for the use in children, because this also will be the first sedative that will be developed to the modern standards with right. a pediatric plan. Okay, okay. And the, the, the expectation is that in Europe, you would actually look to commercialize that yourselves because you, you don't actually have a partner in Europe. Yes. Uh, there is no transnational company in Europe that would, uh, you know, all of these companies that, that are in this space are essentially generic companies. Yeah. So I think this requires medi medical education. So I think we can do this, not in all countries of Europe, but in the yeah. core countries. Yeah. I think that's doable and it makes sense and it will be a transformation for the company. And I mean, that transformation, I mean, taking a product from preclinic through the clinic to the marketplace requires one set of skills, whether it's you're in the clinic or whether it's you're around regulatory affairs. Commercialization, though, is a whole new, different ball game. So, yes. how are you set up to be able to achieve that? Well, we are preparing for this. We are in discussions to hire the people that have that experience. We also have recently hired a person to take care of the supply chain yeah. because that is as important. Uh, because after approval, you also need the product to, to, be, to come to the yeah. customer. Yeah. So that's not, an, that's not an easy process. So we are preparing for that. And uh, I think we will have the people in place at the time of launch. Okay. And I mean, you mentioned that there was a delay in the, sort of the, the progress through the clinic yeah. because of sort of financial constraints. Again, that sort of that launch uh, is going to require, you know, finance. What, wh where are you sort of positioned in terms of your ambitions to raise money? Well, I mean, we, we have good discussions ongoing. We, we are constantly screening what is the yeah. best financing right now. People tell us we are in a stage where we can also blend in some, some debt or royalty financing. Yeah. So because of the advanced stage of the product, so it's not necessarily equity but I would say a good mix of equity and these other financing models would make sense. And since the launch in Europe will be not one launch in every country at one time, so the launch will be staged, like everyone is doing that yeah. because of the pricing. Uh, that means that by that time we have inflows from our partners, we get milestone payments also yeah. for approvals. So that also, that that money will also contribute to our ability to finance those commercial activities. Right. And yeah, in terms of backfilling the, 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 the pipeline, I mean, yes. what, what, what are your ambitions there? Well, we, 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 we will be in a space that I, that I dis best describe as acute and critical care right. and where interventionalists are, are doing their job. So this, this would be the kind of products that you need in, in an emergency room or in the ICU or in the OR. Yes. So these would be the product or let's say a cardiologist who does interventions, either putting in stents or something, people need to be sedated. So that's the kind of situation where we think we will find niche products yeah. that may be too small for big pharma, but very attractive for a company of our size. And what stage would those assets have to be in their own, own development? Because, I mean, as you say, the, the, the original Senate's product was a, a preclinical asset. Yes. Well, I think uh, it, for us it's possible now to acquire products. Um, sometimes bigger partners are happy if they can give this to someone who is dedicated to the space. Yes. So we would distribute on behalf of someone else and thereby reducing the cost for our sales force. So, so it's a broad range of right. options that you have to to, to reduce the impact on the financial needs for the company. Okay, so uh, as you say, the, at the moment, um, you know, with, with, with Remy, the uh, the filings are in. Um, do you sort of have any sort of sense of when the champagne corks will will, will, will be popping? Well, the usual anticipation is that after 12 months or so, you you get an, an approval. So that that will be champagne, maybe. Yeah. Uh, this 
can still happen this year. We will have to see that. Uh, depends on how, what type of questions come back, if that leads to a clock stop, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. For the for the U.S. now that the filing uh, is happening in the, in the next couple of days or weeks, uh, that would mean not this year probably, but uh, early 2020. Right. Okay. Well, Wolfgang. Thanks very much for, 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 for coming along and uh, congratulations. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you.